Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Myesha Edmund, licensed cosmetologist in the state of New York. And I want to talk to you about what's underneath your wigs and your weaves. So if you have a friend, if you are the friend that um, wears weaves and wigs and, um, you know, this might be something that uh, I could help you with, right? So basically, I am a licensed cosmetologist in the state of New York. I am also a World Trichology Society certified trichologist. And guess what? I am super excited to be here. Why? Because, um, you know, just looking at um, the way uh, people are wearing wigs and weaves and all that other stuff, right? I want to know what's going on under there, right? Um, and I have a few tips for you, a few tricks for you, and a few things for you to consider. Um, if you are looking in my bio, I mean, the description of this video, you can get a free 15-minute consultation so that we can look at your um, situation and find out what's going on up underneath that wig or that weave, okay? So the title is, you could be making it worse. You absolutely could be making it worse. Um, what's going on underneath your wigs and your weaves, right? And so when you look at wearing wigs and weaves, um, they are convenient. Um, they have known, they have been known to um, be considered um, protective. And so because they, hey, because they um, are protective, um, we almost use them like armor, right? So we don't, we don't clean them. We don't, want to take them off, you know, they, they make us feel secure. Um, they give us a look that we are looking for. They do things that our hair uh, does not do. And so we'll wear a wig or wear a weave um, almost to the detriment of our own hair and scalp, right? And so um, I want to, number one, talk about neglect, out of sight, out of mind. Neglect, out of sight, out of mind. If you know somebody that is wearing a wig or a weave and they are neglecting their own hair. Um, they have millions of weaves. There's tons of hair everywhere. They just got wigs and weaves, right? And you're just like, I really have never seen their hair. You have to consider the neglect, right? So out of sight, out of mind. And so um, sometimes you wear a wig or you wear weaves for a long period of time. Um, yes, for the versatility. Yes, for the look, because it's easy. But sometimes because you don't want to deal with your hair. Um, you don't want to deal with, um, it, does it flow? Is it going to look right? Is it going to act right today? You know, it is broken off. Um, I have dandruff. I don't actually know what to do. I'm transitioning from um, chemically straightened to relaxed. And so when you look at all of those things as well, it's kind of like, yeah, I'm just going to throw this wig on or let me just throw a weave in my hair real quick. Let me glue in a few tracks. Let me, you know, throw a couple braids in here, some plaits and, and, and put this wig on. Right. And so, hey, how you doing? And so when you look at um, wigs and weaves and what's under it, are you wearing it um, and, and are you being neglectful to your own hair? Number two, what do you do between the current and the next weave? Because that could be making it worse as well, right? You look at people who go, I mean, from weave to weave. I, I had clients uh, before who, like, they would come in with the weave and literally, hey, Tyra, they would come in with the weave and then want you to take it out, you know, shampoo their hair, and then go right into the next weave. But then there are some people that don't even go to a professional, right? So they are like doing bogus things with their hair. For example, um, I take my weave out, I relax my whole head, I braid it back, and I put another weave in. What was the purpose of you relaxing your whole entire... Okay. Okay. Or... Um, not really what not really shampooing the hair, the neglect and, and and what you do in between or with um with your wigs, like not um uh, not taking care of the wig. So you might have more than one wig, right? But what if um the client or yourself you don't 
shampoo the wig. You don't take care of the inside of the wig. You, you're worrying about the outside. You coloring it or you're you're brushing it. You're putting on a wig stand, but you're not turning that joker inside out. You're not washing that wig. And so there's bacteria and fungus and mold and, and, and stink um, that we are just con continuously transferring onto our hair and our scalps. And we wonder why our hair does not perform the way that we thought that it would or that we remember that it did, right? And so you have to consider in between um, you going from one weave to the next and one wig to the next, what is your regimen? Do you have one? You should have one. What kind of shampoos are you using? Um, what are you doing as far as scalp health? And so um, a few of my clients um, that I kept on as um, VIPs um, where I do hairstyling, I scope them um, in between going to their next um, weave. I make sure that we have a style that um, that they maybe can rock, you know, to give themselves a little break. You know, I just make sure that I'm doing um, healthy hair check and scalp check. And so maybe you should do something like that. Don't just go into the next thing. Don't just start um, taking one, you know, you take one weave out and then you relax your whole head, the entire thing, and then go ahead and put the next one in because that's no good. Number three, scalp damage, using real tools to scratch your head, because you could be making it worse. What do I mean? Letter openers, knives, screwdrivers, um, the metal end of a rat tail comb, a pencil, a pen, and then you wonder why you have inflammation of the scalp, or you wonder why your scalp is tender, why it is sore, um, why it is bleeding. Where did this scalp, where did this scab come from, right? Because you're using actual tools, utensils, craziness to dig in your scalp. And so when you go to um, get a style with your own hair and you say, well, you know, it is a protective style. So my hair has been growing out. Hey, Blake, um, my hair has been growing out. And so now um, um, I'm going to go ahead and get my hair cut or I'm going to get a silk press. I'm going to go into another style and you have whole patches missing out of your hair. And why is that? And that is because you have taken pens, pencils, letter openers, knives, um, you know, a partridge in a pear tree, and you are digging in your scalp and literally have done follicular dystrophy or damage to your scalp. So you want to be careful. Um, I know, you know, it, some people are like patting their head down to the ground, but I'd rather you pat it and, and you know, be a little dizzy than to dig in your scalp. So you have to remember um, that you don't want the ink, the lead, whatever dirt and grime is on a screwdriver and a knife and a letter opener on your scalp. And so you can't see, you're digging underneath the braid, you're causing abrasions. And so um, because you're, um, sometimes people are not washing properly. And what happens is because you have an open wound on your scalp, then it allows for more um, bacteria to get inside and underneath the um, the layer of, of skin. And now you have inflammation and, and all kinds of infections and you really want to be careful with that. So that also could be making it worse. Another thing, overuse of oils, right? Because you feel like, okay, I got this wig. I'm going to just, you know, slide it off and just, you know, put my special oils on it. Or you have a weave and you like, I mean, you don't found a needle nose tip and you are just squirting oil for days. You are like heavy handed with the oil. The problem is, is that um, you have that product buildup, right? And so if you're not shampooing properly, then what ends up happening is, is that that oil acts as like almost a magnet. And so you're just inviting inviting dirt and grime and stuff to kind of just sit, right? And then depending on the oil, if it's very thick or if it's cold outside, and I know it's not cold right now, but if it is cold outside, hey, Jeff, um, if it's really cold outside um, and you're using like coconut oil, um, it could do a little damage to your hair. Next, um, what is your shampoo regimen? What kind of shampoos and conditioners are you using? Um, underneath your wigs and your weaves. Okay, so why is this important? This is important because if your hair is in a protective style, you're, um, you have a weave or you have a wig, 
and um, you are not taking the braids out and all of that other stuff. And then you are using clarifying shampoo. You're constantly stripping the hair. You had a little bit of extra neutralizing shampoo from the box relaxer you bought from down at the Rite Aid or the Walmart, right? And so you're using it and you're constantly stripping your hair, stripping your hair. And so then your hair becomes dry, right? It becomes brittle. It breaks off and you don't know it because why? You know, you're scratching, it's shifting, but you're shampooing it. And it's okay because now it's clean, but the shampoo is too harsh for your hair or is stripping the, the nutrients out of your hair. Is it dry? Is your hair dry when, when you're done? Like, are you drying it? Or are you just tying it up? Some people I know, they um, they let the weave hair dry, but the tracks and the braids are not dry. And so they tie it up and then they wonder why there's a smell. Look at your neighbor and say, what's that smell? Right? And so what happens is you end up um, doing more harm than good, right? Number one, the smell. How you doing? Number two, the fungus and that um, the environment for mold and bacteria that you are creating. And then because you do that, you also have the scarf that you're using or whatever that you're using to tie it down, right? Um you have your pillow, you have your comb, you have your brush, you have all that other stuff, right? Hey, how you doing? And so what happens is you're making a horrible environment um, for hair to grow and thrive. And so let me give you an example. Um, I had a client years ago who decided, oh, you know, crochets, they are, they are, um, protective and they're cute and they're easy and I look good in pictures. And you know, Instagram and Facebook and all those other things. So she really wanted to look cute in pictures. And what happened was she left her crochets in and I, I didn't do them, but she, or did I do them? I did do them and she left them in for about five to six months. Um, I begged her and I pleaded with her, come on back now, come on in now, uh, come on in now. Like, you know, when the wind blows, I'm seeing the whole thing shift. It's it's crochets. It shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to take your crochet and lift it and turn it to the other side. However, she didn't, and she was getting really good pictures. And she was saying, you know, the older it gets, Maisha, the better it looks, the cuter it looks. Oh, but I just could get one more week out of it, Maisha. And I'm like, okay. And literally, she went from like end of winter, spring, and then into the summer. And so now it was time for her to take out her crochets, right? And so bad enough, you literally could take that hair and lean it over and she had all this new growth. Well, sis went to take them out. She took out the crochets. She um, she took out like, you know, halfway. You know how you kind of like run your fingers through the braids? She did that. And guess what she did? She put some bogus 99 cent shampoo on her hair you tell me what happened Com go ahead and notate it in the comments tell me what happened i can't even wait let me tell you what happened her hair matted up she didn't properly detangle her hair she wasn't taking care of her hair underneath um the crochets she didn't properly take the braids out and guess what she put shampoo on her hair and that's right it tangled it matted she went from having all this new growth that she was excited to use eventually to, you know, to show off and say, well, I put my hair away for a few months and now look at me, look at this length and long hair don't care and all that length check and all that other stuff. And guess what? She had five dreads. Look at your neighbor and say five dreads. Five of them. They weren't the pretty, the pretty locks. No, 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 no. She had thick, crazy, size of my cup locks. And so there was a panic. Her sister contacted me. And so I'm like, okay, put condition on it. Let's see if we can just kind of detangle it and, you know, all that other stuff. So she sat with conditioner on her hair for two more days. Two more days. And when she got to me, there was still nothing that we could do. All the hair that she had before and all the hair that she grew out had to be cut off. 
And so it matters what you're doing underneath your wigs and underneath your weeds, right? You have to consider how you're taking care of it. Do you have a shampoo regimen? What are you doing? Right? How does it smell? I remember one of my friends telling me that um, the beauty supply store told a young woman that the weave that she was buying lasted a year. Tell me what she did. I can't wait. I'm going to tell you. She left her weave in for a year. No, she didn't keep using the hair over and over for a year. Sis left the same weave in for an entire year because the people said the hair lasts a year. Ma'am, they didn't tell you to keep your weave in for an entire year. Now, if you like me, and I feel like we friends, you probably thinking what I'm thinking. Is she married? I know her lay down air probably really stinks. I, I, she wasn't itching. And she's from Florida. So she not hot. She not sweating. She, her skin not breaking out. Um, her comb, her brush. I mean, just the, the weak stomachs of your husbands and your children and your co-workers. Because you're walking around with a year old weave. Now, I understand, you know, people lay a weave and, and it looks cute and all that other stuff. But all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, you should not never. You don't keep a ponytail in for a year. You take it down, you scratch your head, you, you wash it. Lord, please, somebody. She kept her weave in for an entire year. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's nasty, right? And so I say all that to say this, right? I'm doing free 15-minute consultations. If you know somebody, go ahead and refer them. Refer them on the sneak. I'll call them on your behalf. You know what I'm saying? What? You don't want me to say their name? I won't say their name. But something has got to give. Because now um, you're looking at the fact that you want to grow your hair out. You're looking at the fact that you want to protect it um, and all these other things. And then we're doing the wrong things, right? And so I'm just going to recap really quick. Hey, Teria. So um, neglect, out of sight, out of mind. You could be making it worse. Just because you can't see your hair does not mean that it is not there. And so because it is there, you want to make sure that you're taking care of the weave, of the hair underneath the weave. Wear a weave because you want to, not because you have to. Wear a wig because you want to, not because you have to. You should never have to convince anybody that I do have hair because your, your lines start back here. Can't do it. Thank you so much. Can't do it. Can't do it, right? Number two, what you're doing between the current and the next weave or wig, it matters, right? Are you going from weave to weave? Are you shampooing that hair um, thoroughly? Is there a smell? You can come into my clinic. I have um, an O3, uh, um, ozone machine, and I'll be able to de de um, mm -mm -mm, wrong word, take out the smell um, from your scalp and from your hair. Um, you need a detox, a scalp detox, a hair detox, right? So these things are important as well. What are you doing? Are you taking down your weave and doing a full out bone straight, left it in for 20 days relaxer, and then braiding your hair up and putting another tight weave in it? And, and, a, and a closure and a frontal and some glue and a partridge in a pear tree? Like what's going on with that? Number three, scalp damage because you're using real tools. Do not scratch underneath your wig and your weave with a pen and a letter opener and a butter knife and a key and a pencil and a screwdriver and the end of the rat tail comb. Don't do it. OK, you don't 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 save a bobby pin that you have distorted and and left in your hair. So that in the case something pop off and you need to scratch, you can get in there and dig because why you end up um, causing abrasion to your scalp. You end up um, causing an infection. There's bacteria and stuff like that because we're not taking care of our scalps and our hair properly or the tracks and all that other stuff. And then we cause a crazy infection. And then we say, the stylist took my hair out. The braids must have been too tight. Granted, the braids might have been tight, right? But were you digging in your head with a butter knife? Answer me. Were you digging in your head with a butter knife? 
right? Were you using a screwdriver, sis? Where'd you get the screwdriver, sis? Th this is a letter opener. Why are you digging in your scalp like that, right? All right. So the tools matter. Don't go under that. I think, you know, I think I used to sell them, but I know they still got the under, under the weave scratches. Get one of those, something nice and safe. Overuse of oils. You don't want to use too much oil. It's sealing. It also causes almost like an, a magnetic effect for dirt, right? So you at the beach and all that other stuff, and you done oiled yourself all the way down up underneath the weave. The weave. Now you on the beach, you got sand and all that stuff just stuck to your head. So you want to make sure, hey, how you doing? That um, you are laying, You know, you kind of light on the, you know, on the, the um oils, right? Next is number five, your shampoo regimen. What kind of shampoo are you using? You can't just use any old kind of shampoo. Also, what I forgot to mention, you don't want it to be too thick. You don't want a thick, slimy shampoo, an extremely creamy, thick conditioner when you're wearing wigs or weaves. Um, because the braids are there, you're causing a buildup, that stuff is sitting there. And then guess what? While it doesn't directly cause hair loss, what happens is um, you will begin to clog the follicles. It is called folliculitis. Then your follicles begin to be inflamed and they're, they're clogged up. And listen, then as a result, eventually the hair falls out. So you really want to be careful. Um, is your hair dry? Are you tying it up wet? Do you have a sit under dryer? Or do you know that you can't properly dry your hair by shampooing it, especially if you have a long weave, and putting it in a tight ponytail. You won't have to separate them tracks a little bit, sis, so that the air can get to it, um, even if you're under the dryer. And so that was my little spiel about you could be making it worse. I don't want you to make it worse. I want you to have hair, right? Because I'm a hairstylist. How you doing? And because I'm a hairstylist, I want you to be able to have hair. You know, but in the case that your hair is falling out, please go ahead and um, go to the link in my bio if you are in Instagram or the link in the description if you're here on Facebook so that you can get a free 15 minute consultation. I am opening up next week. Um, the clinic is opening up and um, I would love to see you and help you to um, fight hair loss and, and get you some answers and stuff like that. So have a great day, everybody. Um, happy hair growing. And I will be talking to you guys. Over